Okay guys, so I recently got a few new tools and while some of them are meh, a few of them gave me that feeling of, gosh, why didn't I just get one of these sooner? And that got me thinking. And so I decided to make a list of all the tools that I wish I'd picked up sooner. Now, one important note here. This video is not going to be limited to just 3D printing tools. If you want a strictly list of 3D printing tools, I actually already did a couple videos about those. So check them out up here. I'll be covering a wider range of tools in this video, though some of them are definitely applicable to 3D printing and other hobby making stuff. Fortunately, I'm cheap, so these tools are all highly affordable for casual users like me. Stretch out your wallets, because we're going to move quickly. Let's get after it. The first tool on my list is going to be this cheapy wireless portable soldering iron. Now for years, I've used different levels of corded soldering irons, which is a pain, especially if you're already a crappy solderer like I am without a dangling cable to throw off your dexterity. But then people started talking about the TS-101 and the pine sill and all of that. And those are a bit expensive here in Israel, but more importantly, I was really disappointed to find out that they aren't actually wireless. You still need to wire them up using USB-C or a power bank. So imagine my excitement when I found this, a truly wireless battery powered soldering iron that costs like $9. But does it actually work? Yeah. Believe it or not, this thing heats up quickly to three different temperatures and it does the job all without wires. Of course, there are sacrifices. Replacement heads are not as readily available as the pine sill ones, and it is not nearly as powerful as a pine sill. So if you're using big wires and soldering major gauge cables, it's probably not gonna cut the mustard. And since I know you're wondering, the battery only lasts like 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the temperature you're using. So if you're doing a ton of soldering or again, using those thick gauge wires, yeah, get the pine sill. But personally, I almost never use a soldering iron for more than 15 minutes at a time. I'm mostly doing heat set inserts and very, very small cables. And so this one works great. Plus it automatically shuts off after 10 minutes anyways. So call me cheap because I am, but I'd rather have a few of these kicking around at my home and workshop than one expensive pine sill that I have to carry around with a separate power bank. Link in the description. Growing up, my dad had two wire drills. They both sucked. I don't think I discovered that there were battery powered drills until I was already a grown man. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. Insane, I know. What's more, it wasn't until a few years ago that I learned that there's a difference between a drill, even a multiple mode drill and screwdriver like this one, and an impact driver. In case you, like myself, don't know, an impact driver can work like a normal screwdriver, but when it encounters resistance, it changes to using impact as a means of force. Basically, banging to create more force using lower RPMs. This means that it can drive much more difficult fasteners with relative ease. But what's more, it means that these types of drivers have a smaller motor, which thus means that they are lighter and much easier to operate, especially in tight spaces. For way too long, I would simply swap between a drill bit and a driver bit in this combination drill, and picking up a dedicated impact driver was honestly a game changer in just how quick and how enjoyable it was to work on projects. Up next, let's talk about this full face respirator. In some past videos, I've mentioned how even when using a normal respirator, I was having serious trouble with sinus infections and black gunk coming out of my nose. Not to mention what I'm sure went into my lungs. Now, some of you commented that I would need to shave my beard in order to get a proper seal, but, but I'd rather eat sawdust than shave off my beard and reveal my puny chin, so I went looking for other options. What I found was this full face respirator, which combines your basic respirator with eye protection. Somehow it suffers from much less of an issue with getting a seal on my bearded face 
but more importantly, I no longer have to play the game of jiggling and adjusting my safety goggles in order to try to set them up in a way which doesn't interfere with my ear protection without rendering my eye protection useless. And because this thing, unlike safety glasses, doesn't fall off my face and get scratched every single time I bend over, I can now actually see what I'm working on, which helps. If you don't have one of these things, I highly recommend picking one up. Speaking of ear protection, let's talk about that because protecting your ears is honestly way more important than most people recognize. I often see YouTubers using some consumer grade noise canceling headphones to try to protect themselves from deafening power tools and it honestly makes me cringe every single time. See, a couple of different times in my youth, I caved in to peer pressure at concerts or nightclubs. I took out my earplugs and now I'll be suffering from tinnitus and hearing loss for the rest of my life. If there's so much as a running tap nearby, I have no freaking idea what my wife or my children are saying. I just hear this Snoopy-esque mumbling. It sucks and it's irreversible. So don't be an idiot like me. Find some good ear protection, something that you will actually use. Yeah, you can probably get by with those disposable foam earplugs, but do they actually work well in your ear canal? And are you going to actually take the time to properly insert them? Now, I previously did a video about how I custom made some silicone earplugs with 3D printing. And while these are fantastic for when I go to concerts or bars, when I'm in my makerspace with dirty, grimy hands, I really don't want to be shoving fingers into my ears. For this reason, I really love these very basic 3M ear protectors. Not only are they professionally made by a reputable company to actually do something, but they're easy to take on and off without needing to remove gloves or clean my hands first. Now, I use these all the time, whether I'm hammering, using a Dremel tool, an impact driver, and honestly, you should be too. They're not expensive, but hearing aids are. So remember how I talked about the tools my dad had in my garage and how it took years for me to explore the whole wide world of proper tools? Well, I'm ashamed to admit that I kind of never realized that everyday non-carpenter people like you and me could buy something as seemingly extravagant and dangerous as a table saw. For years, I had managed with just a jigsaw for smaller or curved cuts and a circular saw for everything else. And that was fine, except I could never get a straight edge to save my life, and any project that required a lot of sawing was a nightmare. But earlier this year, when I moved into this workspace, I decided to challenge my preconceived notions. And in doing so, I discovered that while I was correct in assuming that the table saws that I was seeing on YouTube or in various carpenters workshops do cost multiple thousands of dollars, you can still get an entry level portable table saw for like a few hundred bucks and it'll probably be just fine for your needs as a hobbyist. Personally, I picked up this one from Shepa, which I don't think is available in the US, but consider heading down to your local tool shop and asking them for their advice. If you do any significant amount of sawing, especially long cuts or rips as they're called, you're gonna be really, really glad you did. Aside here, please learn how to use any and all tools, especially this one and the next one safely. You guys have commented on a bunch of my videos about me not using certain tools properly, which I super appreciate. And I've since made a habit of actually watching a bunch of safety videos before I even unbox new tools like this one. Honestly, the whole table saw experience really got me thinking. What are some other tools that I've always assumed are only accessible to professionals, but which can be purchased and safely used by average Joes like you and me? I'm talking planers, air compressors, let me know in the comments below, because honestly, it's only fair that if I'm causing you to spend a bunch of money on tools, you should have the same opportunity to do the same to me. Let's go broke together. In the meantime, while I wait for those comments and the resulting credit card bill, let's talk about another tool that I assumed I needed a bank loan or at least some kind of training to actually own and operate. I'm talking about an arc welder. 
Okay, so welding is this crazy cool skill, right? I mean, trained welders work in factories and literally melt pieces of metal together. There's no way that I could do any of that without some sort of like apprenticeship or something, right? But then I watched a bunch of Colin Furs videos and realized that dude is trained as a plumber and he's out there welding load-bearing structures and digging bunkers underground. I think I can figure this out. Well, the stars aligned and my favorite local tool retailer emailed me about a year-end special. An entry-level arc welder and all the starter tools I need for something like 125 bucks. Sold. Now, for the uninitiated like I was not long ago, there are a bunch of different kinds of welders and obviously at that price, I'm getting the absolute basic entry-level bare bones kind, a DC stick welder. No automatic feeding, no gas shielding. It's pretty basic, but it's the perfect way to figure out if I like welding and if I actually have a use for it. And let me tell you, ever since I got this thing, I've had no shortage of ideas for things I can weld. When all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. But when you have a 3D printer, a laser cutter, an impact driver, and an arc welder, you can melt nails. Now, before you finish typing out that comment, yes, I still absolutely suck at welding. But the important thing is, I'm really enjoying learning. Safely, and with the proper precautions, of course. And it's unlocked a whole new category of making and problem solving for me, and new possibilities for taking my projects to the next level. Speaking of taking your projects to the next level, it's at this point that I need to thank this video's sponsor, because while you and I might be able to splurge and pick up a table saw, an arc welder, and so on, we're probably not going to be able to afford an industrial injection molding machine, a metal 3D printer, or a PCB fab anytime soon. Fortunately, we don't have to. With PCBWay, you can simply upload your creation, whether it's CNC machining titanium, folding sheet metal, building a complete PCB, or anything in between, they'll take care of everything, including having a real human check your designs to make sure there are no issues. All with incredibly reasonable pricing and minimal lead times. I actually got an opportunity to tour one of PCBWay's many factories while I was visiting in China, and I was blown away by the sheer scale, not to mention the professionalism of their entire operation. So to level up your next maker project, visit the link in the description where you'll get an exclusive sign-on bonus. Thanks to all of you for supporting the people who make this channel possible, and thanks to PCBWay, our longest-running sponsor. Okay, back to maker toys we can actually afford, shall we? So, table saws and arc welders are really, really cool, but as you can imagine, they create a lot of messes. At first, I tried to manage this with a dinky little combination pressure washer and vacuum that I use at home, and that thing choked up faster than a dad on his daughter's prom night. I briefly looked into proper dust extraction systems like some of the ones that I've seen fellow content creators use, but because I'm in a rented space, underground, and also not doing a whole lot of woodworking on a day-to-day -day basis, they kind of didn't make sense for me. Fortunately, I consulted with that same local tool retailer who talked me into this big-ass generic industrial vacuum. Now I'm going to be honest with you, at 4,500 watts, this thing is so powerful that I literally can't turn on all three motors at once without tripping the breaker. But since I got it, it has not only become instrumental for any type of woodworking, it's also really, really helped me to keep this whole space in order. Purge lines and errant supports, dust from drilling into the concrete walls, nasty water from God knows what, loose nuts and bolts. This thing don't care. Honey bad you don't care. At home, I have a top-of-the-line Dyson and the top-of-the-line robot vacuum to go with it. But when it comes to anything even remotely shoppy, those two grind to a halt and buckle faster than a celebrity being canceled. This thing, however, is designed to slurp it all up without missing a beat. Now, I don't know how much an industrial vacuum costs where you live, and I don't know how much space you actually have wherever you're making stuff. But I do know that consumer household vacuums are not meant to suck up sawdust, plastic bits, concrete dust, and screws. So if you are doing any kind of making, definitely consider getting the appropriate vacuum to clean up after yourself. 
Speaking of cleaning up, I recently did a whole video about air circulation and air purifiers. And let me tell you, sponsored content aside, because they sponsored that video, but not this one, I'm really happy that I now have a proper air purifier in my workspace. This particular one from Drio automatically adjusts itself based on air quality readings, a lot like the Dyson one, which is really, really good because when I'm in the middle of sawing or soldering or painting or attempting to weld, I can't be bothered to open up the app and kick it up a notch. Now, I can't tell you how many times that I've thought that the air quality in my space won't be severely impacted by whatever I'm doing. For example, moving things off of a shelf that I didn't realize had become so dusty only to hear the air purifier kick it into high gear. And between that, the tips that I offered in that video for replacing the air in my studio and the full face respirator I talked about earlier, I'm really happy to report that I haven't had another sinus infection since. Okay, so this next one is one that I'm actually really excited about. And you're probably gonna laugh at me because it's honestly a really, really small thing. So I was recently watching I Like to Make Stuff and Bob, who, by the way, I really, really want to be friends with, went into this whole fatherly lecture about pocket knives. He talked about how being given a pocket knife as a child was a pivotal moment in his life and what it taught him about learning responsibility and empowerment and trust. And he also talked about the importance of finding the right pocket knife that suits your needs and your personality. Doing this, he explained, is the difference between another gadget sitting in the drawer collecting dust and a reliable everyday carry that you never leave home without. This really, really resonated with me. I mean, I've had dozens and dozens of Swiss Army knife type things gifted to me or that I've bought over the years from tons of different companies, but I've never ever felt compelled to actually carry them with me, so I never have them when I need them. So I did a bit of research and I discovered one that really, really works for me. I landed on this Gerber armbar trade, I think it's called. No corkscrew, I haven't had alcohol in years, and there's no red plastic. It's just this simple multi-tool which has nearly all the tools I might actually need in my day-to-day -day life and none of the stuff that I don't. It's also really small and it comes in my favorite colors, black and orange. And since I've got it, I've not only had it in my pocket every single day, but I've found countless uses for it, from opening up my mail all the way to adjusting things at my mother-in-law's house without having to go looking for her rusty old screwdrivers. I'm gonna link below to that video from I Like To Make Stuff because I think it's a worthwhile little pep talk before you choose. And then I wanna encourage you to think about what types of tools you could use every single day. And then go find a multi-tool that has those tools and nothing but in a form factor that you'd be proud to carry. Oh, and I also really liked what Bob had to say about giving a first knife to kids at the appropriate age, so check that out too. Oh, and I'll link to this one in case you have this similar hobby and personality to me. So there you have it. Tools that I wish I'd invested in sooner for my own maker projects. But honestly, it's been my experience that if you need a tool once, you'll rarely ever regret investing in it. So. I would personally really appreciate it if you'd comment below and let me know what my next tool purchases should be. Oh, and if you learned something in this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and consider subscribing for more great content. Finally, let me give a big thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters, especially our Nylon and Peak members, Chip Cox, Two Crazy Ketos, Amir Khan, Chris Miller, and Don Arledge. That's all for this week, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.